This is the story of Katrina, the lesser spotted cat shark who was found washed up and stranded along Hillhead Beach. And this is her just after she was introduced to the nursery tank. It all started on a dog walk on a particularly stormy day when my mum miraculously spotted the little marine morsel. We were quite used to finding plenty of shark and ray egg cases before, but this one you could actually see the live embryo inside. It was high tide and the weather was way too stormy to put the egg back, so I thought it would be best to take the egg home. The only way I could safely transport the egg back where I didn't have a container with me was to quickly resubmerge the egg to remove an air bubble that had formed, and then gather up some damp seaweed and wrap it up to maintain the humidity. And after that, I slung it in my pocket and ran home as quickly as I could before it could become jerky for some pesky herring gull. <laughs> Luckily at home, I had an empty fish tank which I could use, and I attempted to replicate the seabed which it would naturally inhabit so it wouldn't become too homesick. Whilst the embryo was developing, I frequently changed the water. I added a air pump to make sure the water was well oxygenated, and I also added a water filter to make sure the water quality was well maintained. Alongside all of this, I wanted there to be deep sediment which contained polychaete worms, and this would allow the sediment to be reworked and allow denitrifying bacteria to colonise the sediment, and this would stop the nitrate levels getting too high to toxic levels. Now it was just a matter of waiting for the little cat shark to hatch. Several months later, and one week before she hatched, you can clearly see the difference in size from when she was first initially found. You can even see that the yolk sac has been completely used up. When she finally hatched, it was quite a surprise, and it was great to see her finally swimming around after being cooped up for so long. Along with the polychaetes that were already in the tank, I collected some amphipod crustaceans, which were proportional prey for Katrina. I was able to identify that she was a female due to the lack of claspers on the pelvic fins. Male sharks and rays use these clasper fins to introduce sperm into females when mating. The day before she was released, I started to slowly decrease the water temperature. This was done over intervals using far cooler, freshly collected seawater. The reason for this is cat sharks are ectothermic or cold-blooded, so they would be unable to cope with any drastic temperature fluctuations. By the morning, the water temperature had decreased to 14 degrees Celsius, which was the same at the release site. I was so happy to finally be able to release her back into the wild, <laughs> but that didn't stop me from producing a few tears, as you can see. And hopefully, one day she'll be able to produce some more pups of her own. Solent and waters around the Isle of Wight have been highlighted as a shark and ray hotspot. These are some of the species that have been documented in these waters. There is limited life history information on these species, however, these waters are also thought to contain pupping grounds for taupe, smooth hound, possibly thresher sharks, and even poor beagle. The Solent also provides nursery grounds for taupe, along with undulate and thornback rays. Sharks and rays play an extremely crucial role in the ecosystem. They do this by maintaining balance through predation. Because of this, it's extremely important that we ensure these species and sites are protected. If you're looking for ways to help the marine environment in the Hampshire and Isle area, go ahead and click the link in the description below under Secrets of the Solent. It's an incredible project set up by the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust and supported by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. And if you would like to find out more information on sharks and rays in the Solent and around the Isle of Wight, please find in the description a link to the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust website.